One such aquatic noxious weed is purple loosestrife. It grows in wetlands and along freshwater lakes, streams, rivers, and creeks, and will even tolerate some salt water. Purple loosestrife came to the northeastern seaboard of the U.S. in the ballasts of ships in the early 1800s. It sat on the coast for 100 years, acclimating itself to the new land before it started moving across America. It can now be found throughout the U.S. Purple loosestrife was also sold as a garden plant, although education and our noxious weed laws continue to help prevent or even stop this method of spread. Purple loosestrife showed up in the irrigation waterways of eastern Washington in the 1960s. It now covers 23,000 acres in a 50,000 acre wetland. This plant completely dominates a site. It disrupts wetland ecosystems by pushing out native and beneficial plants. Once the native plants are gone, this forces waterfowl, birds, and other animals to leave the area to seek food, nesting material, and ground cover elsewhere. Why did it take over? Well, it spreads mainly by seeds, an amazing 2.7 million seeds per plant. But it also spreads from the buried stems that harbor little buds that produce shoots or roots. Because of all of its reproductive strategies, the key to controlling purple loosestrife is diligence. Prevention is the key option for keeping this invasive plant out of many wetlands in Washington that do not have purple loosestrife. While purple loosestrife is still found in gardens, continuing education is helping to let others know how it is a problem for wetland plants and animals when this plant escapes from gardens. Even though it's possible to find purple loosestrife for sale or available through the internet, it is illegal to buy, sell, or offer for sale any purple loosestrife or purple loosestrife cultivars in Washington.